Good day and welcome to another episode of your favorite program, Infrastructure Weekly, where we present to you the strides of the Buhari administration in the area of infrastructure development. I am your regular guide, Abosadi Omowi. Join us after this break to go into the program proper. Stay tuned. Coming together with opportunity. Uh, this is what infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channels Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. We are starting today's program from the road sector and precisely from Section 2 of the Lagos Ibado Expressway, spanning kilometer 44 to 127 after the Shagamo interchange to the Ojo end in Ibadan. The federal government says when the road is completed, it will be a thing of pride to all Nigerians, with it being the first of its kind in the nation and the signal of a new way of doing things in the road sector. It is also expected to be the precursor to a new standard of road in the country, which can be compared to the very best in the world. Join us on this trip to the site of the construction with Olubak in the Alabi. This is construction going on on the section 2 of the Lagos Ibado Expressway, which is a 77 kilometer stretch from after the Shigamu interchange to Ojor end of the road in Ibado. The road, which is being handled by Reynolds Construction Company Limited, is to last for a period of four years. The project is an extension of the current dual carriageway from two lanes to three lanes with additional features that were not in the current carriageway, which is being scrapped off. According to the project supervisor for the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, Uluba Kinde Alabi, the project being worked on is the beginning of doing things in a new and improved way. Any road, you understand it, that has its quality will stand the test of time. That's the first thing. Then again on this road, uh, certain measures has been put as per the quality standard of this road. It's one of the cardinal of this uh, administration and the Federal Ministry of Force to ensure first the incorporation of the rightful materials on the road, both in quality and both in uh, workmanship. The workmanship engaged, the quality engaged on this road are of uh, the required standard. And we are working in accordance with Nigerian standard. We have our specification for roads and design, roads and bridges. We have our uh, design manual, Federal Highway Design Manual, another international standard that we are showing on this road and apart from that we also have um, uh, monitoring compliance on this road our headquarters monitoring compliance from the design from the material and geotechnics another uh, application for our design on this road and uh, we always carry out tests appropriate tests in accordance with world standard design on our concrete, if you see our concrete works, if you see our asphaltic works. So, before lane after lane of all uh, materials, we ensure that all appropriate standards are met on this road. According to him, the project specifies better, more modern, stable and more long-lasting road surface 
that has also taken into consideration the major issue affecting roads longevity in Nigeria, draining of surface water. On this road, we don't have flyovers, that's number one. We have a construction of the pavement, we have drainages work, we have median crash barriers, we have rehabilitation and repair of damaged bridges. If you go to kilometer 71, you see the bridges, the bridge, some, some, some bridges are in serious disrepair on this road. Some bridges have been burned, so we have to remove them, we have to replace them, and we have to uh, reconstruct them. So that is what we are doing here. We are not doing any interchanges. And on this project, uh, we are making uh, provision for uh, pedestrian bridges along the corridors of this road. So we are incorporating uh, pedestrian bridges, we are incorporating street lights on this uh, our road. Then we are incorporating uh, concrete and other hydraulic structure on this road. The project has also taken into consideration development on the axis over the years since the road was originally built in the 70s. As you can see, uh, the project uh, consists of uh, incorporation of many works. Where we are here now, you see that uh, there are some existing roads from the other bound. I think you can see there are some existing road. There is the median. That is why we call it expansion, expansion, rehabilitation. We are expanding the road towards the median. We are rehabilitating the old road. You understand it? And we are reconstructing the new expansion on the road. That's why we call it rehabilitation, reconstruction, and expansion work of Lagos Urban Express Road. The road will be completed in 2022 following the addition of more features and jacking up of the initial contract sum. So much for the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. We move now to the roads. The federal government has reiterated its commitment to the completion of the various rail projects scattered around the lands and breadth of the country. Minister of Transportation, Roti Miyamechi, who was speaking on the achievements of the Buhari administration in infrastructure development, said, The strides in the sector transcend just infrastructure, but encompass economy and general national development. He added that the federal government will complete all rail projects on schedule, especially the Lagos Ibadan Rail Project, which is part of the Lagos Canal Rail Line, slated for completion by the end of the year. A transport sector with adequate infrastructure in good condition is critical for any nation's success. In particular, transport infrastructure plays a critical enabler role in increasing the impact of nearly all other sectors of the economy. Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi assures Nigerians that the construction project of the Lagos Ibadan Rail Line will hopefully be completed by December, adding that President Muhammad Buhari's administration has done so much in all aspects of the economy beyond the transportation sector. I hope we deliver in December Lagos Ibadan. We are determined to. If we don't, you will see that it's not, it's not, a, it's not out of the fact that we didn't make enough effort to deliver. That's why I go to Lagos once every month to supervise the project management meetings. Central to the federal government's agenda is the priority to ensure security of lives and property in the transportation sector. On this, the minister says train users need not fear as mechanisms are being put in place to ensure maximum security and safety when they travel across the country, especially on the Abuja Kaduna route where there has been several allegations of attacks on the coaches. The policemen inside the coaches, the only thing you can say is that I hope they're not overwhelmed. But even if they, they try to attack them, we are in a position to respond in less than five minutes by the way we have put vehicles and this around that area to ensure that they are able to respond to any breakdown or any attack on the, tra on the, on the train. The National Assembly had passed the bill that converts Nigeria Shippers Council to National Transport Commission. The bill is currently waiting for the assent of the President and once it is signed into law, it will be capable of setting the transport sector on the path of positive development. 
the federal government is also focused on developing an efficient multimodal transport system and create a safety oversight commission that will drive the national transport policy. The establishment of dry ports is to avoid the mistakes of the seaports where there are conjectures. However, there are plans by all relevant agencies under the Buhari administration to operate a 24-hour service so that goods can be cleared within 48 hours. We're working hard on the narrow gauge so that we can take the narrow gauge and move goods up to Kano and all that. That's what we're doing. But in terms of time for you to clear your goods, that has been improved. We are working currently with the Minister of Finance to get uh, what we call the national trade platform and what you call single window. Single window enables you to clear in 24 to 48 hours. The Office of the Vice President has set up a, a, a committee that we have met for more than one year. Custom, MPA, Minister of Transport, Minister of Finance, and have come to conclusion that we're about to go to cabinet for approval. When we get cabinet approval, we will then have to procure all the necessary equipment that will ensure that goods are cleared in one day. According to the Minister of Transportation, the Lagos Ibadan rail track has currently attained 90% completion and government is working hard to complete the project by December 2018 in order to reduce travel time and facilitate economic activities. If you are just joining us, the program is still Infrastructure Weekly. You can engage with us on social media on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Infrastructure Weekly and on Twitter at Infra underscore Weekly. Also, be part of the program by responding to a question on the achievements of the Buhari administration in bridging the nation's infrastructure deficit. Join us after this break for more on the program. Don't go away. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. The program is still Infrastructure Weekly. We move now to the power sector. The buzzword in the last few weeks within the sector is the expansion of the national power transmission grid to enable it to meet the current and future challenges of generation and distribution. But the federal government has not been found wanting in the area of renewable power supply. Join us on this ride as we present this update on the drive to enhance the nation's power mix with renewable energy. Access to electricity will help Nigeria achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal for Sustainable Energy. The President, Mohamed Buhari government, is already providing electricity through renewable energy solutions to Nigerian markets and investors in order to boost ease of doing business and foster learning. We developed the off-grid strategy, which I know most of you are aware of. Um, the off-grid strategy is um, centering ab ar around four or five projects, which is solar home systems, uh, which is targeting the hardest to reach communities uh, in the country uh, with absence of uh, any sort of commercial activities within um, the community. And then we have the, the high, um, mini grid, um, uh, which is focusing on communities that are completely off grid and uh, and with presence of commercial activities like, for example, the agricultural. The private sector is essential to achieving the rural electrification goal of developing 10,000 mini grid sites by 2030. Local content is being considered in the energizing Nigeria project. This would make solar availability cheaper. 
for Nigerians. Uh, we're also doing uh, um, energizing education, which is targeting um, providing um, sustainable power to um, federal universities across the country. Any one of us who has studied in the country would know the hardship you have to you had to go through in you know access having to read at night sometimes without power. All of this is we have an energy database. There is need for government to support, recognize power developers and the private sector working on renewable energy in the country. Energy also should be energy for development, basically. And the only way we can get this done is also you know to decentralize the energy solutions to get it to the farms, to get it to the tailors, uh, to displace these generators that people are using. To achieve all this, stakeholders need to ensure all hands on deck to improve power sector diversification and economic growth. Still on the power sector, let's share some of those cheering news with you. The federal government has approved the $64 million contract for the supply of power to Ascrivos communities in Delta State. The award was announced by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, who disclosed that the project is for the supply of power to the area following the construction of a pipeline to the communities from Wari. The project, which is in two lots, has one to build a power plant and the other to build the transmission lines to supply power to the communities. Meanwhile, the Aquaipum state government is in the process of completing four injection substations to enhance power supply to Aquaipum state. We'll take a break now and when we return, we'll hit the home stretch with the housing sector. Stay with us. Coming together this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatts of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. You can continue the engagement with us on the social media handles showing on your screen with comments, inquiries, and feedback. Now to the housing sector. The National Housing Program has again been hailed as a beacon of hope for the team in Nigerians who still suffer from lack of affordable housing. Join us on this voyage as we take a closer look at how this is happening all over the country. On inception, the National Housing Program 2016 was designed to address some major issues aside being a platform for the bridging of the gap of the reported millions of housing units deficit Nigerians deal with annually. The issues include the driving down the rates of letting and selling of houses, employment opportunities for young Nigerians, especially artisans, and driving the local economy. Over time, since its takeoff, workers in the construction industry especially builders and other associated activities, have commended the federal government for the decision to embark on the projects. The of unemployment there and there, in our professional side, we don't have any place where you wake up, you go, you walk, and then you end something. And so many challenges, so many demands back home there from the family and your personal needs. But uh, the coming of this work, when I got the job, actually the job has helped me a lot. Right now, one, in terms of knowledge-wise, I've uh, increased my knowledge in the field. Uh -huh. Secondly, my bank account is high. At least I can solve one or two problems. While the commendations continue, the other targets set by the program on inception seems to be taking roots too, with the respondents in Yola, the Adamawa State Capital, loading the federal government for a program they say will help in reducing house rent costs. 
They added that the state has the highest rent rates in northern Nigeria outside of Abuja, a situation they say will be remedied once the houses which are now ready are handed over to their lucky owners. The essence of this project is to address the housing deficit we are experiencing nationwide. So the federal government has decided to embark upon this to increase the housing stock for Nigerians. As you can see, we have reached here almost 90 percent and apart from the infrastructure that is starting, most of the houses are almost uh, completed and even we are even at the process of working out the guideline of giving the allocations. While Nigerians continue to wait in anticipation of the announcement for the allotment of the houses scattered all over the country, in the first instance, the drivers of the project continue to assure that the D-Day is near. Contractors, we are encouraging them to perform. You can see that last time you came here, the level of job was not like this. Now we have, some of them have delivered. Okay? And... Those that were not taken off that time, they are on now, they are working, seriously. So actually, the contractors too are responding. Actually, right now, we, there are about uh, 12 contractors that are involved in this project. And each of the contractors is having two, two units. Okay? Apart from a single contractor that is putting on condominium, because that one is a three-story building or two floors okay so you can see three of them have delivered three of the contractors have delivered fully completed practical completion and the other ones you can see they are roofing level except for two of them that are the maybe because of some issues especially the one that was, is to be built with brick we are expecting him to come and start molding the brick. The provision of water, almost a 65 percent job has been done. You can see now, this is the water treatment plant house. All the components are ready, but it's not yet fixed. They are not yet fixed due to security, because if we are, if we fix it, no, no fencing yet not so that that is why we kept some of the components in the in our store in the office uh, you know to avoid the uh, vandalism and uh, whatever that to avoid the stolen of some of these uh, components this is uh, the grand we have a grand tank and mobile tank this grand tank is about uh, is 45,000 liters. Why the overhead tank is 75,000 liters? Now with reticulation, this will serve the whole the entire estate because we will reticulate it from the point from this side to the main estate for use. Then we have four drilling points. There will be a relieving power pump. They will store relieving pump. The reason why it is the height of this overhead tank is, is like this because so as to serve to make it effective is 15 meters high. As you are looking at it, it's 15 meters high. And the contractor in charge is SK do and it has gone a long way. So it's nearly completed. It's about 16 65% job has been done there. Then why that of road? By my assessment, they have done up to about uh, 25%. Because some of the drainages are yet to be put in place. Some in terms of concrete work, they are they are doing the they have done the excavation and the concrete work is in is in is ongoing. The beneficiary of these uh, houses, uh, the, the general public, everybody is entitled. No matter, you are, it's not for, for civil servant alone. Everybody is, in, is, in, is entitled. 
and the guidelines will be out very soon on how to acquire one. The effects of the National Housing Program will, according to experts, become more widespread, especially once the program moves onto the major mass building stage after the initial pilot scheme currently going on nationwide. They posit that the employment opportunities to be generated and the ripple effect will be akin to what the United States of America experienced during the course of the rebuilding after the Great Depression. That is it on this week's episode of the program. Join us again next week for another interesting episode. Until then, pay your tax and protect all public utilities. Happy Independence Anniversary, Nigeria, and bye for now.